Hi there. Welcome to That's English. Hello. In today's documentary, we're going to find out where the notion of good taste comes from and what taste really means. You'll hear about the influence of the aesthetic movement and arbiters of taste, such as the writer Oscar Wilde. We also meet an etiquette expert. As you watch the documentary, see if you can answer this question. What does the concept of taste mean? Do you prefer this or this? Do these designs make you go ah or uh? Which style appeals to you more? It's all just a personal question of taste, isn't it? We all have our own taste in fashion, in furniture, in music. But taste is more than just knowing what we like and don't like. It's something that reflects our personality and expresses our identity. It also links us to other groups of people with similar tastes. In Britain, taste is closely related to social divisions. People from different classes buy and do different things. It tells others which part of society they belong to. The idea that something is beautiful or ugly has been around since the beginning of time. But the concept of taste as something that unites or divides us developed in the 18th century. Alex Goddard is a curator at the Jeffrey Museum. She tells us more about how taste has evolved over time. During the 18th century, the middle classes, or the middling sort as they were known at that time, were really starting to establish themselves as a distinct social class, um, different from the elite and different from the labouring classes. And these people had a taste all of their own. They had some disposable income, they were people like merchants, doctors, lawyers, and they wanted things that looked a very specific way. They liked things that were good quality, that were neat and not too showy. As the British Empire expanded and the Industrial Revolution um, began, goods, of course, became much more readily available. So um, people began to write literature advising people on what was good taste. Oscar Wilde, of course, had a huge influence on um, middle-class taste through the aesthetic movement. Lots of people admired Oscar Wilde and wanted to align themselves with him, so followed all of his recommendations about good taste. We asked her if people are still open to influencers when it comes to taste. I think the British public are still hugely influenced by um, advice um, that comes to them in a whole load of different ways now. So in the same way as people were advised by um, arbiters of taste in the 19th century, we're still doing that today. Taste in clothes and music may have changed over the years, but it's not just about what you buy or the things you wear. Taste can be about elegance, grace and good manners. We asked etiquette expert Tamiko Zablith what good taste is all about. So in England, good taste is about understatement. It's not about wearing brand names. It isn't about showing your wealth in such a way. The media can be a culprit when it comes to good taste. They might be portraying a message of mini skirts, high heel Jimmy Choo shoes. And if one were to wear that to an event in good taste, such as a polo match, for instance, and you arrive in your stiletto shoes, no matter what brand they are, no matter how expensive they were, you would not be viewed as being in good taste because it would show that you did not understand that you do not wear heels on lawn at such events. We also asked her if money and class necessarily go together. It's definitely fair to say that money does not equate with class. You can have an extraordinary amount of money, but if you do not have an appreciation for the things you're purchasing, it does often show. So I would say to anyone who has a massive amount of wealth, it would be best to invest that wealth into education and, and learning about the things that you're starting to acquire. Taste is more than just the things you like. Some would say it's about social class and manners. Perhaps there is no such thing as good or bad taste. It's just choices we make 
that reflect our personality and identity. So, it seems you can have a lot of money, but not necessarily have good taste. What about our question? What does the concept of taste mean? Taste is more than just the things you like. Some would say it's about social class and manners. Perhaps there is no such thing as good or bad taste. It's just choices we make that reflect our personality and identity. So, taste is more than the things we like. It's also about social class and manners. And the choices we make that reflect our personality and identity. The documentary focused on good taste, but we asked our international friends, what's considered bad taste in your country? You'll hear the verbs show off and flaunt, which means to try and impress people with what you have. It's quite important for women to dress quite demurely, i.e. to cover up to a certain extent when you're visiting elderly people, older relatives and friends in the family. America is pretty conservative, so I would say bad taste would be crude jokes, racist jokes, sexist jokes, um, also maybe flaunting sex and flaunting money. In a, showing off your sort of affluence, your wealth in a very vulgar way. So if you walk into the pub and you're all, you know, dressed up in the fur coats and the jewellery or what have you, uh, or you have a very flashy car, um, if someone is quite well off, Irish people like them to be sort of low key about it. Skipping a line. So Canadians love to line up for things. If you're at the bar, if you're waiting for a coffee, you know, it's all about line and order. So it's definitely bad taste if you push it in, with, in a line. Discussing politics and religion with a heavy opinion that divides people is in bad taste. Jamaicans have a love of doing things properly. So doing things outside of procedure is seen as bad taste. And disrespecting elders is something which is frowned upon as well. Bad taste in England, I think, is talking about money. People don't often talk about their salaries. Unless they earn a low salary, then it seems to be more acceptable. If you're earning quite a good salary or you have a nice house, you just don't discuss it. So, it seems bad taste often equates with bad manners. For example, in Canada, jumping the queue or skipping the line, as they say. Or in Jamaica, disrespecting your elders. And in Ireland, and the US, it's bad taste to show off your money. While in England, even talking about money is considered bad taste. Right, now it's time to watch That's Britain. This time, Alex visits a historic house called Dalmain Mansion. We meet the owner, Jane Hazel McCosh. As you watch, answer this question. What's the significance of oranges at Dalmain? <laughs> Hello, I'm at Dale Main Mansion and Historic Gardens. This beautiful home is on the edge of the Lake District. Dale Main has been the home of the Hazel McCosh family for 11 generations. This is a private home, but the family open a large part of the house and surrounding gardens to the public every year. Visitors to the mansion can get a taste of four centuries of history, five acres of award-winning gardens, historic parkland and delicious homemade food served in the medieval hall tea room. This is the courtyard and behind me are a number of 16th century barns and stables. I'm with Jane Hazel McCosh. Now, Jane lives here with her husband, Robert, and their family, and Dale Main is their home. Jane, thank you very much for having us. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of Dale Main? This house is an extraordinary mixture of periods in history, from the 12th century right through to the modern day, when we eventually got a loo block built on. But originally, it was simply a castle, and then a medieval hall, and then a wonderful Georgian addition, which is the whole of the front of the house. Jane, how do you match your modern tastes and needs with such a historic home? 
Well, it's a very interesting thing because with three children, it's always difficult to know how to manage in a very large house. And at the end of the um, 1800s, of course, there were masses of staff helping to keep it um, clean and looking after your children and everything else. Whereas today, we don't have any help at all. But um, in fact, with all the modern technology, it's not as difficult as you might think. And actually, our children absolutely love the house and are all very helpful in making it work. Now, out of all the rooms, which is your favourite room in Dalemane? I love this room. I think it is one of my most favourite rooms. And it very much reflects how we as a family live because we adore having people staying here and people coming here, such as yourself, and it is um, great fun to entertain. And so this room will be used a lot um, for meals, and although it's a very large room and a very large table, it's actually great fun to have a lot of people coming for lunch or coming for supper. It is also the most lovely room in terms of um, views from it. Absolutely. Now, Jane, I noticed you've got some oranges on the table there. What's the significance of those? Well, I have three passions in life. I have my husband, my children, and I have oranges because we are the centre of the world for making marmalade. In many areas of the house, you see the influence and importance that marmalade has here at Dale Main. And on the second floor, there's even a marmalade museum where everywhere you look, you see delicious looking jars of all shapes and sizes. Jane and I are now in Dale Main's Tea Rooms. Jane, what can you tell us about the Marmalade Awards and Festival? The Awards and Festival started 10 years ago and it has entries from all over the world and we mark them and give them a certificate and a mark card. Now, how many people, how many entries do you get? To it this? goes up every year. And so this year we had well over 2,000. 2,000. How do you taste so many? Well, we have a wonderful <laughs> team of volunteers and they come in for days to judge and taste. So the marmalade is actually, it comes from Seville. It's the Seville oranges. Um, what's your connection with Seville? It's very interesting. The Seville orange actually is an endangered species and we need to save it. Well, Jane, I know you've got some of your own marmalades here, which I definitely want to try. And I'm a big marmalade fan, so it might take me a while. So I'll see you next time in Nottingham. Mm, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> what an extraordinary person. And what a beautiful house and gardens. So tasteful. Did you answer the question, what's the significance of oranges at Dalmain? Well, I have three passions in life. I have my husband, my children, and I have oranges because we are the centre of the world for making marmalade. So, Dalmain is the centre of the world for making marmalade. They have a marmalade festival every year and a marmalade museum. And all made from Seville oranges, which Jane says are in danger of extinction. Well, after seeing Alex tasting that marmalade, I'm going to try some myself. Mmm, it's delicious. See you next time. Bye.